Welcome to another video at Optics Trade Debates. Uh, today, Andras and myself, Theodor, we will speak about a category of products on our webpage, and these are the infrared illuminators. Uh, this is quite an interesting topic with so many questions, and I know, Andras, that you did some brainstorming in our team. We already discussed a couple of uh, topics before. Uh, so I would just like to ask you if you can start with the uh, most basic questions about the products of this category. Yeah, the first question would definitely be why are the this uh, IR illuminators used? On which devices, in what kind of situations and so on? Well, basically with any night vision device, except if it's the best third generation device, uh, with all others, uh, you need some sort of light and we say invisible light, so invisible to people, invisible to animals, uh, but still light, uh, with which you illuminate the scene which you are watching uh, with a night vision device. So with all digital night vision devices, with uh, Gen 1, Generation 1 night vision devices, Generation 2, 2 Plus uh, night vision devices, and even some Generation 3 devices, you always need some sort of uh, infrared illuminator which illuminates the objects which you are uh, watching, observing with invisible light so that you are able to gather this light with the device and to see a normal image. Now I know that when it comes to analog devices, Gen 1 and Gen 2 and then with digital uh, devices, they all come with some kind of um, included uh, illuminator that's already um, added to the housing of the device. Um, some, yes, some. Now these can be purchased extra yeah. I, um, and I believe that these are produce some kind of stronger uh, beam mm -hmm. and uh, in a lot of situations it is advisable to purchase one of these extra when you get a device. Well, it's true, more than half of all devices from the category of night, night vision devices, so either goggles, uh, monoculars, uh, binoculars, night vision rifle scopes even though we don't sell rifle scopes and night vision clip-ons, majority of them, they already come with built-in infrared illuminator. Some don't. There are many, especially clip-on uh, night vision devices, generation 2 plus, which don't have any illuminator as standard. So you always need to buy a separate illuminator. So with devices where there is no built-in infrared illuminator, there is a really simple choice. You need to buy additional infrared illuminator so that you can utilize the full potential of the night vision device. With those which already have built in some sort of infrared illuminator, you have an option to buy extra illuminator uh, for the following reasons. Either to have a little bit stronger, uh, more intense uh, illuminator, which enables you to see more with your device. Uh, usually it's like this, if you have a specified, let's say, 250 meters of detection range with a built-in um, infrared illuminator. If you buy a really powerful one, extra, additional, like those on the table, you can extend your detection range for at least 20-30%. And not only that you extend your detection range, also the, all the details which you're seeing are better because you have a stronger illuminator, so all the details are uh, nicely lit uh, uh, and that means that you get a better picture and the difference is really noticeable. So basically if the device doesn't have any built-in infrared illuminator you need it in a, you definitely need one additional. If it already has you can just extend the range you can uh, get a better image quality with an additional more powerful uh, external uh, illuminator. Thank you. So uh, when you look up each of these on the on the web, you will find some kind of a table of specifications. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what I think that our customers would most like to know, which information in the table of specifications is most important when choosing an illuminator? Mm, I would say there are more than one. First of all, Actually, yeah. the first information, probably the most important one is the wavelength of the infrared illuminator. Since you know, we could say also color, not only the wavelength, so people, um, if you really simplify this matter, so that it, it is easier to, to understand. So you can choose different colors, different wavelengths of these illuminators, and 
each of this wavelength range <clears throat> is more suitable than others for a certain type of night vision devices. So if you have a night vision device of uh, generation 1, so Gen 1 night vision devices, you need an infrared illuminator which uh, transmits the light in the wavelength between 800 or 780, let's say something like that, 780, so at the edge of the visible spectrum where the person can see, all the way up to 850. So usually we say around 800 uh, nanometers, this is the most suitable wavelength for generation 1 night vision devices. If you have the generation 2 or generation 2 plus night vision devices, then the most suitable wavelength range is between 850 and 900. First of all, this wavelength is even less visible to animals, especially to red deer and um, wild boars. And second of all, uh, the image intensifying tubes which are inside of Gen 2 devices they amplify the light in this wavelength range the best. So we usually say, okay, for Gen 2 Plus, buy 850 or 875, maybe even 905 if you have a really good uh, image intensifying tube in your device. If you have a digital night vision, then you need to buy the illuminator which is in a wave which uh, emits light in the wavelength of uh, between 900 and 950, even 980, some of the best devices. This is completely invisible to all animals, but the sensors inside of uh, digital night vision devices, they really amplify this, the light in this, in this range of wavelengths the best. So basically you need to choose which wavelength is most suitable for your device. So you always start with uh, what kind of device I have, this is the starting question, which illuminator would work best with my device? And a separate question is, if you're using this for hunting, uh, which wavelength is also suitable for the purpose of hunting so that the, the animals do not see it, do not detect it? So this is the first factor, the wavelength. The second factor is the power. So the more powerful it is, the better it will work. And uh, the third, I would say, the third dilemma in, in, in all of this uh, infrared um, illuminators is if they have a, a dimmer where you can set the intensity. This is something that is really, really important. Uh, since there are some, uh, some infrared illuminators which only have a switch for on-off. And sometimes this is not the best solution because you uh, usually have a, the intensity on the on is too high. So it is important if, if the infrared illuminator has the possibility that you are able to adjust the intensity so that you get the most appropriate intensity level uh, of the illuminator for a given set of conditions uh, in which you're in and you're using your night vision. So if we uh, just go a little back to the wavelength, uh, this is so above 780 nanometers, this is all invisible spectrum yeah. for the humans mm -hmm. and for the animals, the, invisibles, uh, the invisible starts spectrum at 870, somewhere around 870, there. 850, somewhere there it starts at. Uh, so if you have a Gen 1 device, it's, it's really hard to get an illuminator which will be invisible to the animals, but at the same time it will amplify the, the, the image, uh, well, at the same time that it will work with the Gen 1 device. Yeah. Because if you take an illuminator, let's say 915, this one is 915 for a digital, well, this one is even 940. So if you take a 940 nanometers infrared illuminator and put it on a Gen 1 device, analog, you can put the power to maximum and you won't see anything. It's like you're not having an illuminator because it transmits light, it emits lights, uh, light in a, in a wavelength range which is uh, not detectable by the, by the device. So this is why it's so important that you always look in pair. You see which device I have, which illuminator I will need. This is, this is the most important question in this category. 
Uh, another dilemma here in, here in the field of the IR illuminators is whether to choose an illuminator that is powered by, um, by an uh, LED or mm -hmm. by a laser diode. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an also a very interesting topic, but uh, it interlaps a little bit because it's far more important the general quality of the infrared uh, illuminator, not the type of, uh, of the source of light. Uh, so if you have a really high quality LED, uh, it will work better than low quality laser. There are some differences between them. First of all, the LED is usually much cheaper. So this is the first difference. The second difference is that the, when we are talking about wavelengths, we have to know that no, uh, almost no illuminator is, well, to be really sp specific, they say monochromatic. That means that it uh, emits light in only one wavelength. Uh, this is something what is, uh, the common misconception because when they say okay this is an 850 nanometer um, infrared illuminator so all the light which emits is 850 at 850 nanometer of wavelength it's not true but the the peak of its power is around 850 but usually the the range in which the infrared illuminator emits light is a little bit wider so with LED, it usually is around 50 nanometers. So when the infrared illuminator with LED uh, diode is specified as 850, that usually means it's from 825 to 875, but it has its peak power at 850. But that means that when it emits light at 825 nanometers, it will be this part of, of its wavelength uh, range it will be more noticeable to animals and in this topic the laser um, powered infrared illuminators have a little bit of an edge since the the range of, of light which laser transmits is really 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 narrow because if it has a laser diode inside then if it's specified at 850 it's usually not more than 5 nanometers of, of the entire range. So that means it goes from 847 yeah, to 852 52. or 853. So it's really, really narrow. And this is, this is the main advantage of, uh, of laser-powered uh, infrared uh, illuminators compared to the LED. The minus normally is the price. Um, so I would, I would say if the finances are uh, not a problem, go with a laser, um, laser infrared illuminator, even if it's more expensive, uh, since it's going to work better. And normally, usually people say, okay, I will pay really a lot of money for the night vision device. Let's say if somebody is buying, let's say, Yanke or Dedal or something similar, we are talking about four, five, six thousand euros. And then for the infrared illuminator, it's always like, okay, I need this, but it can be the cheapest on the market. Uh, this, is, this is the big mistake. Since with a high quality infrared illuminator, you can really enhance the performance of your night vision device. So sometimes we even say that even if we buy a little bit cheaper night vision optics with a really good illuminator, you can fix its performance mm -hmm. like Okay, fix, but yes, yeah, so. it will perform much better with a really high quality uh, infrared illuminator than with something really basic. Yes, um, if we move on, so uh, with the illuminators, I've also come across the term known as the focus. Mm -hmm. Now, if you could perhaps explain a little bit what focus is and if all the illuminators have focus. Um, focus. First of all, I will say not all of them. Like this one, this one from uh, Phoenix, Yanke, has no focus. They also do produce a model with focus. Uh, so this one basically floods light in all directions. Well, not, but the beam is really, really wide. All others on the table at the moment, no, this one also doesn't have a focus. Yeah, this one from Depot also has no focus. Mm -hmm. So, oh, no, no, I, I apologize, it has focus. You can see it here, yeah. It has focus but there are some that don't like this Yanka for instance 
all the rest have focus and that, that basically means that you can regulate how wide the beam of light will be. If you get a really small illuminated point somewhere where you will have concentrated all the light from the illuminator and you will see really well all the details in this point or you will have a little bit wider circle of uh, illuminated area, uh, you control this with a focus. So this, this it's, and it's really, really usable because Sometimes even if the even if the even if you have a infrared illuminator which is visible to animals, you can really focus it down to a small point. And if you're really careful and do not point this beam of light into the eyes of the animal, you can go all over the animal's body, and the animal will not notice that you are um, that you are really emitting a light in its direction because you will have really small focus, uh, focused point. Uh, so I would say when you're buying an illuminator, it's really, really smart to buy one with a, with a focus function. The other, I would say important uh, topic in this, uh, about this matter is, uh, if you can aim this beam of light into a specific direction. And this is something what some illuminators have and others don't. Let's say with this depot you have two screws here where you can regulate really very simple, uh, I would say very analog to the to the concept of zeroing the rifle scope. So you are able, you mount the infrared illuminator on your device, device and then you can really zero in the beam in the center of the image. So you can actually point the direction of the beam once it's already mounted. Yeah. So that it, yeah. it's in accordance with the device. So that you, you want it. Yeah. yeah. So that you really point it into the center of the of the device image. So that means in the you in the axis of the in the optical axis of this device. And this is really good because then with a the focus you just um, set the correct wide of the beam and you get the whole image nicely covered with light. So this and is two terms that actually correspond to each other are the, the yeah. I would say the focus and then the beam dire direction. Yeah, this, these two points are really important and some um, illuminators have this feature. So first the focus so that you are able to widen or, or shrink the beam and then that you are able to point it either up and down, left and right, so that you get it into the center of the image. So each of these have a different mechanism that regulates this? Mostly, I would say, if you look at all of this here, there are two main options. Yeah, like see here, you can do it the same, left and right, up and down. Um, one option is like on, on this Pulsar uh, infrared illuminators and this depot, that you are really pointing with a, with a lens, with a, it's not an objective lens, but with a lens, uh, you're pointing in the, and changing the direction of the beam. The other option is on the mount, like this ATM. So on this ATM, you can change how it's pointed in accordance with the mount. So in, internally, it's one mechanism which allows you so that you can change the direction of the whole lamp. Uh, in accordance with the direction of the mount. Is this mechanism perhaps um, affected by recoil as well? Uh, can it move it for perhaps it, for a little bit? It depends all on the quality. I think that here you can uh, just tighten the screws well and it will, and it stay. will stay this way. Yeah. Uh, it it's goes the same for all these other systems where you're just changing the position of the lens. Uh, normally if you have a really hard kicking, I would say African magnum caliber or something like that, uh, it can lead to problems but usually it's not a big issue. Usually you just uh, do this once and then tighten all the screws like or this ring here and then you are set and it will always uh, emit light in the, in the wished direction. Uh, my last question has to do with um, illumination intensity regulation but I think we mm -hmm. already spoke a little bit about this so you already mentioned that yeah most of these illuminators have like this Yanke settings like one, two, three, four and zero again. So you basically regulate the intensity. On Pulsar, you have a rotating button on the top, also on Depot. Mm -hmm. So you're always uh, have uh, numerous positions of the, of the intensity and 
with this also numerous intensity levels. There are, however, some infrared illuminators which only have an on-off switch, and this is usually a little bit problematic because usually the, the when you turn the illuminator on, it's too strong. The, the intensity is too too high, and then you can't really, see anything. Probably. Yeah, you see, but everything is white or or really green. Everything is really bright, too bright. It's like looking really almost a, not to the sun because if you look into the sun your eyes get damaged but but the image is too bright if we put it simply uh, one of the producers that uh, produces its infrared illuminators as standard without uh, the intensity regulation is uh, laser looks which in my opinion at this moment produces the best infrared illuminators with a laser diode inside uh, but they offer a separate dimmer, which you can buy separately and mount on the on existing uh, infrared illuminator. And then you can then you can switch the regulate the intensity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And th I think this is really really important that you buy both pieces because it works much better with the uh, intensity regulator than without it. Thank you very much for all your answers. I hope we covered most of the things, even though this is a really complex topic. Uh, I would like to ask all our viewers if you forgot something, if you, have, if you have any additional questions, use comments below or send us an email, because this is a complicated topic. Yeah, this is a little bit of a longer debate because yeah. we had to cover all of the features that the illuminators offer. Yeah, especially because the illuminators, infrared illuminators are uh, so neglected. I would say everybody puts all their energy into research of night vision devices and they forget about the infrared illuminators which are really really important. So I'm glad that we covered this uh, topic in a little bit more into detail and I do hope that uh, you will send us emails with all additional questions. Thank you very much for watching, hit like, subscribe to our YouTube channel and see you in the next debates video. Bye okay. bye! bye.